What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I'm bringing to you a card discussion on Crossout Designator, a brand new card that just got announced for the OCG as a jump promo. And it's basically like if the old man from Called by the Grave had an orgy with the mob of people in Prohibition. It's a really, really interesting card. And so that's why I wanted to bring you that discussion today. So Crossout Designator is a quick play spell with an effect that reads as follows. Declare one card name, banish one card with that name from your deck and if you do, until the end of this turn, its effects are negated, as well as the activated effects and effects on the field of cards with the same original name. You can only activate one crossout designator per turn. So when you read this at first glance, it does sound very reminiscent to Called by the Grave. And so I want to centralize the majority of today's discussion comparing crossout designator to Called by the Grave because there are some very important distinctions to make between the two cards, some that make crossout designator better in some instances and some that are objectively worse. So let's go ahead and start by what these two cards have in common. First and foremost, they're both quick play spells, so that's incredibly powerful just the fact that you can chain them in response to any action your opponent may take, and the majority of the time you're going to be activating this card is probably going to be used to counteract your opponent's hand traps because while with this card you're going to be banishing one of your own hand traps to negate the activation or rather the effect of that hand trap, with Called by the grave, you're getting rid of the opposing player's hand trap by banishing it from the graveyard to negate its effect, but it's essentially doing the same exact thing, negating the hand trap, which means both of these cards can stop Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, they can stop Ghost Ogre, they can stop Effect Failure. There's pretty much no limit to the amount of cards that both of these can stop when it comes to the hand trap lineup. But one card in particular that Crossout Designator can stop that Called by the Grave cannot is Infinite Impermanence, because Infinite and permanence does not go to the graveyard and also because of the fact that it isn't a monster you actually can't use called by the grave to negate it which is why a lot of people opt to play that card over something like effect failure due to the fact that it cannot be stopped by called by the grave however cross out designator can stop this card if you banish one of your infinite and permanences that you have in your deck so it actually can stop something that called by the grave cannot another example would be it can stop called by the grave so if you're going on your combo and your opponent's trying to disrupt you in some form by using called by the grave to maybe like banish one of your hand traps or to maybe banish one of your in graveyard you know combo pieces then you can use cross out designator to banish a copy of called by the grave from your deck and negate called by the grave for the duration of the turn so it's kind of like ghost spell because this is why people primarily play ghost spell is to stop called by the grave but it has a much wider application because you don't have to solely use it for something like Call by the Grave or a graveyard specific effect. You can use it for basically any card as long as you play that exact same card in your deck. One thing I really like about Crossout Designator over Call by the Grave is the fact that it doesn't last until the end of the next turn, which means if you use Call by the Grave, for instance, to stop your opponent's Ash Blossom, when it's their turn, you can't use your own copy because Call by the Grave lasts until the end of the next turn, but Crossout Designator only lasts until the end of the turn. Meaning, if your opponent uses Ash Blossom, you can banish one from your deck to negate Ash Blossom during your turn. Then when it's their turn, if you still have an Ash Blossom in hand, you can still use that to disrupt your opponent during their turn. And I think that's very valuable because there are some instances where people do open a hand trap that their opponent happens to play on the same turn and Call by the Grave essentially blanks that card in their own hand. Sure, it may effectively advance their game state, but then it's one less disruptive you have when it's your opponent's turn and you're trying to stop them from making their plays. And just think about this card in the context of mirror matches because when it comes to the mirror match, your deck and your opponent's deck are probably like 95% identical, which means when it comes to cross out designator at any point, if you have that card set on the field, you can effectively disrupt your opponent at any point throughout their combo or their play in an instance where not a lot of deck would have that opportunity. When it comes to specific hand traps, there's only specific points where you can drop those hand traps that they would actually be effective. But Crossout Designator can hit specific points in mirror matches that typical hand traps or forms of disruption cannot. And so when it comes to any instance where a mirror match would be played that this card is incorporated into the main deck, it's just going to be a bloodbath because playing around this card is going to be an absolute nightmare. Just by hitting specific cards at specific moments, 
that would typically be considered safe, Crossout Designator can just completely obliterate any hope of you advancing your game state just because of this single card. Now, let me give you guys an extreme example here, and I'm going to go ahead and throw back to one of my most hated cards of all time that I'm now happy is on the ban list, Soul Charge. Do you guys remember the days where your opponent would have Soul Charge, or maybe you had yourself in a position where you were winning, and the only card that your opponent could rip off the top of their deck to have any hope of coming back into the game was Soul Charge. They somehow miraculously managed to rip it, and then you lost the game as a result of that. Well, if Soul Charge were still legal, again, this is purely a hypothetical situation, and you're playing Cross Out Designator, all you would have to do is banish the copy of Soul Charge out of your deck, and you can negate their copy of Soul Charge. And again, I know this is an extreme example, but Soul Charge was one of those very swingy cards that could basically win you the game if it properly resolved. And there wasn't a lot of cards that could really stop Soul Charge because people weren't really playing stuff like Solemn Warning, Solemn Judgment hadn't been out for long enough, and there's not many cards that specifically negate spell cards. There's a couple like Omni Negate type cards, but those are really few and far between. Soul Charge was one of those cards that more often than not was probably going to resolve. But with a card as generic as Cross Out Designator, using this extreme example of Soul Charge, you can just extrapolate that concept and apply it to any high power level card that's played in the main deck to stop cards that typically would not have a natural answer in any specific metagame. Now, I don't want to discuss this card without covering the cons as well, because this card is not perfect by any means. I mean, first of all, it is a hard once per turn. Call by the Grave has the luxury of not having the once per turn clause, which the fact that a card like that exists in this point in Yu-Gi-Oh's lifespan is kind of ridiculous, but this card is in fact a hard once per turn. And frankly, I think if it didn't have the hard once per turn clause, it would be way too powerful because this card is already really strong. So if it had the same luxury of being a not once per turn like Call by the Grave, I think it would just be utterly absurd. Now the second con when it comes to this card is that it doesn't banish your opponent's card, you're having to banish one of your own cards. And that can be argued either way as to whether that's good or bad, but the reason I see that as a con is because the nice thing about Call by the Grave is that it's almost like a DD Crow as well as it is a way to stop hand traps. So if your opponent has some sort of graveyard recursive strategy, and you have a way to pretty much disrupt them by banishing whatever it is they might be targeting in the graveyard for maybe resurrection or adding back to their hand, Call by the Grave could use its DD Crow part of its effect, so to speak. Yeah, you're negating all the effects of that card for the turn anyway, but you're pretty much using it to stop them from recurring whatever resource they're targeting in any particular instance. This card doesn't do that, and that's not necessarily, again, a bad thing, but it can be applicable depending on the way the meta is if there's a lot of graveyard reliant decks. I know a lot of people like Called by the Grave being able to not only negate the effect of the card that they're banishing, but banishing it practically removes it from the game entirely, making it a lot harder for their opponent to get back into the game. The third downside that I want to point out is that this card requires you to play the specific cards you're wanting to stop with it in your main deck. Now, that may not seem like a bad thing, but the reason I bring this up is because if you're playing a combo deck, combo decks inherently don't want to play hand traps because they aren't combo pieces and they're not extenders that are ultimately going to help achieve their win condition. So playing a card like this in a combo deck is a little bit iffy because it's not effectively going to do much because if you're not playing Ash Blossom in your main deck or if you're not playing, you know, any of the hand traps that you could be to help stop your opponent, basically to ensure that your combo goes off, it's not really going to benefit you at all. Now, you could side deck it if you happen to go up against a mirror match where then 95% of your decks are identical, so you could hit like anything, but if your main goal of this card is to hit hand traps and you're playing a combo deck, it doesn't exactly serve well for you. I think the primary purpose of this card is that if you play a deck that has like combo-esque elements, but also plays a ton of hand traps, you want to ensure that that combo does resolve. So take for instance the deck like Salamangrate. Salamangrate plays anywhere from like 9 to 12 hand traps in the main deck, but also does have inherent 1 and 2 card combinations that it wants to resolve. So effectively, this is 
is a very good card for a deck like Salamangre, just as an example, because you're going to be inherently playing the cards that you also want to stop at the same time. And not to mention, if you do happen to go against the mirror match, you're going to have an absolute blowout card in Crossout Designator. The fourth thing I don't really like about this card is that it doesn't really do anything to monsters summoned out of the extra deck. I mean, this card did just get like revealed today, and I'm pretty sure we don't have the full or correct translation, but I'm like 99% certain you're only going to be able to send cards from your main deck to fulfill this card's requirement. And again, that's kind of like a give or take thing as well. But the way I see it is there are a lot of really powerful cards in the extra deck that you are going to want to stop that your hand traps are typically going to be targeting in most instances. And Cross Out Designator won't be able to hit those since you can't send cards from your extra deck to the uh, banish pile to negate those effects. So that is something to keep in mind as well. And the fifth thing that I don't like about this card is that it's a jump promo, and that may be like a very small thing, but because we stopped getting jump promos the traditional way, we have no idea when we're going to receive this card. Obviously, Japan's going to be receiving it rather soon, but when it comes to us, we might not be receiving this until we get like another Battles of Legend type set like months into the future, or another one of those random sets like Dual Power, or a set that they can actually include a jump promo type card that we've seen in the past that they've done to kind of catch us up to the jump promos that we have yet to receive from the OCG, but it's a little bit weird because a card this powerful, not only do we not know when it's going to come out, but imagine being in the OCG and this is a jump promo and you're basically going to want to have like three copies of this card just to be able to stop all the different things that this card is capable of stopping. It's a little bit of a weird situation. Hopefully they do print this in a dual power or a Battles of Legend type set and don't really kind of give it as like an OCG exclusive in, you know, something like Rising Rampage or a main booster set because this is going to be one hell of an expensive card card if they decide to go that route. Ultimately, I think Crossout Designator is an extremely powerful card. I don't think it's necessarily a replacement for Called by the Grave, but I think for particular decks, they are going to possibly want to include both because it kind of acts like a pseudo fourth, fifth, and sixth copy of Called by the Grave, basically making it so you can negate as many combo pieces as possible to ensure that your plays are going to go through. But it can't exactly be played in traditional combo decks because they require them to play the cards that they want to stop. It's a very interesting dynamic. I think it's actually a very well-designed card, and I really look forward to seeing what impact it has on our game. So guys, those are just my thoughts. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about Crossout Designator. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. So guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And if you found this video informative, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member because just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.